I don't care whether you're in co- corporate America, you're in the military, or whether you run in a husband-wife relationship, it has to be about communication. This is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Wall Street. Black Wall Street. When I say black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Black. I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community not a particular political party. Greetings. Greetings. Welcome to this 15th edition of Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham. I am super excited. I want to urge you to connect with us online at Black Brand Biz on Facebook and Instagram and at Black Wall Street Today via Facebook and Instagram and BWS Today on Twitter. What are your business development goals for 2019? Let Black Brand, Hampton Roads Regional Black Chamber of Commerce, help you with your advocacy, exposure, media, funding, finance, and community needs. Submit a membership application on our website at www.blackbrand.biz. Attend our first networking brunch and learn of the year on Saturday, January 19th at Cutlass Grill in Chesapeake, begin at 11 a.m. and uncover the leader within with Terrell Jones of the Productive Academy and Angela Hollowell of Lead the Success Coach Company. Tickets now available on Eventbrite at janbrunchandlearn.eventbrite.com. Tickets for Black Diamond Week in 2019 are also now on sale and deep discounts are available for those super early birds. In fact, just enter the promo code super early bird, no spaces at blackdiamondweekend.com and get 40% off individual tickets. Only 100 all access VIP tickets are available at the discounted rate and they are already moving for this event that will take place November 29th through December 1st at the beautiful Western Virginia Beach Town Center. We celebrate success in black entrepreneurship and provide opportunities for economic development. Hope to see you there. Many congratulations on the passing of the Ashanti Alert Act at the federal level. This bill provides an alert system for missing adults in the same way that the Amber Alert provides a system for missing children. Quote, if you knew Ashanti, then you knew that you had a friend. I've said often that she never met a stranger. Though it's been hard coping with her leaving me, her earthly father, I have great joy knowing that she's with her heavenly father and one day we will see one another again. I'm eternally grateful for her life, a life well lived. Because through the Ashanti Alert Act, lives will be saved, Meltoni said. Quote, I thank my family for carrying me when I began to weaken. I want to thank Michael Muhammad, Kimberly Wimbish, Attorney Don Scott, Delegate Jay Jones and his team, Congressman Scott Taylor and his team, Senator Mark Warner and his team. And I dare not forget about the Hampton Roads community and everyone who's been praying for my family, end quote. Similarly, Ashanti's mother, Brandy, described the legislation as being, quote, a beacon of hope for those that have a loved one deemed as missing under questionable circumstances. Quote, we're elated that this legislation has been enacted. Just because my daughter's life was tragically cut short, that doesn't mean that my time as a mother, her mother, is over. Far from it. This federal legislation, the Ashanti Alert Act, is the first step in my current journey without my daughter by my side, Brandy said. Again, congrats again and thank you sincerely to those whose efforts helped bring this legislation to pass. So a new year is upon us. And while I know that most of us are prepared to the max, we know our financial game plan and we've invested in the appropriate execution strategy. Some of us are still in need of a little help. So introducing stock market and entrepreneurship with J.R. Fenwick, Hampton University alum, founder and CEO of FlipThatStock.com and award winning author of How I Quit My $100,000 a Year Job. Mr. Fenwick, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Greetings. 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 Let's jump right in. What is it that you are um, talking with your members about as we're kind of heading into 2019? How are you helping them to uh, get what it is they really want out of this year? You know, that's a that's a great question. And, you know, most people know me uh, for Flip That Stock and my passion for uh, trading uh, in the stock market and, and teaching and coaching others to do that. But, um, and, and people get so excited because, you know, they just want to hop in and, and get going and this, that, and the other. But there's really a step 
before that, before you even start in the stock market, before you even start your journey, you really have to decide what exactly it is that you want. Why, why, are you, why do you even want to be involved with the stock market? What are you looking to get out of it? And so the first thing that we're doing in 2019 is we're identifying what do we want for this year? What are we looking for in our life? And, and, and how are we going to go about getting that? Because otherwise, you're just going in a bunch of different directions. So that's the first step that we're doing with, uh, with members. So is that like a goal-setting piece or is that just... Uh, just what you said, really just getting getting clarity about, you know, what it is that we're wanting to accomplish. Yeah, it's actually both. But, but the first thing is, you know, think about this. And I use this analogy. So every day we get up and at some point we decide what we're going to eat, right? Mm-hmm. So we may say, you know, I want some <laughs> Chinese food. I want some pizza. I want, you know, um, uh, some, some Italian food, whatever. Yeah. So we make a decision. Okay, I want pizza. All right, I use pizza because I like pizza. All right. I do so too. Now, <laughs> okay, all right, so we're on the same Yes. Now, I, I, want you and you, and I want your listening audience to, to just follow me on this, all right? So we get up and we decide we want pizza. All right, so we say, okay, we're either going to, you know, let's say we're going to go to uh, a pizza place and order pizza. But then once we decided we're going to get pizza, do we just go in there and tell them to make the pizza any kind of way they want to and we'll buy it? No, we're very detailed. We're very specific. You know, I want pepperoni. I want mushroom. I want this. I want that. And don't let them mess our pizza up because we're going to go back to them. I said I didn't want it. Right. We're going to go right back. (laughs) I'm with with you. We put all this detail in deciding what we're going to eat. And making a pizza, mm-hmm. and then we'll get up and go to these jobs that we hate, and just let them throw everything at us, or let life wow. throw at us, this, that, and the other at us. We won't spend the time that we'll spend on a pizza designing our life. So love that this analogy. Is I mean. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about in 2019. We got to get clarity, like we have clarity with that pizza. Mm-hmm. We have to have clarity and say, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. And then now that we have that. Now we got to know what it takes to uh, to get what we want, and that's that's the next step. We got the clarity, we set the goal, but now are we willing to get in our car and drive in the rain to go get that pizza? Hmm. You see, everybody wants to go, and it's a sunny day, and it's nice, and it's warm, and it's beautiful. But what if it's not? What if it's snowing? Out? Are, you know, what if it's cold? Out? Are we willing to still go and get that pizza? Hmm. You know, see that'll stop people right there. Uh, you know, it's, it's raining out. I'll just settle for you know uh, some soggy left, you know, soggy leftovers or something. Wow. Um, so this is where we get to. We got to get this done before we even get into all the other stuff. You see, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, it makes a lot of sense. If you've just joined us, uh, this is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street today, where. Having a conversation, actually the first part in a five-part series with uh, Mr. J.R. Fenwick, who is the founder and CEO of FlipThatStock.com. Uh, we're getting clarity on what we really want in 2019 so that we can engage with these stock market and entrepreneurship tools um, to, to to have a successful year. Is that right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, so go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, one of the things that I found, too, uh, in this journey into getting with people, you know, what you want is um, a term that I call uh, mastering the mundane. Right? Mm. And what do I mean by that? Most people have heard of, of uh, Michael Jordan, and they may or may not know that um, he shot a thousand shots. They say after they had a full basketball practice, say two or three hours, he would then go and shoot a thousand shots. Same with Kobe Bryant. All right. Now, nobody's going to convince me as much as they love basketball that they love to do that every single day after practice. But what they loved was the result that they got from it. Yeah. But they learned to master the mundane. The mundane is just shooting the shot over, 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 over again. Mm-hmm. They mastered that so that when it came game time, they could perform. And I found this is where a lot of people fall short is that they say, I want this. I want to be financially free. I want to make money in the stock market. 
But if they try something once and it doesn't work, uh uh-uh, uh, it, it, see, it didn't work. Or they won't go through the process, the full process of really learning it and understanding it and embracing the challenges of it to get to the other side. So that's all part of the process as well. So being willing to go through that uh, that tedium <laughs> of, of yes. the routine in order to um, have what most people won't ever have, sounds like. Yeah, exactly. If you look at most highly successful people, they have a routine that they do mm-hmm. over and over and over again every day, and it gives them the desired results. And they understand there's days that they just don't want to do it. There's days I just don't want to do it. But I understand the routine gives me the desired result that I want. And I love that desired result, so I'm willing to go through it. And you just make it a part of, you know, your 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 life. Again, think about this. People get up, and I live in the D.C. area, mm-hmm. and they get up and they go every day and sit on that beltway in that traffic. They've mastered the mundane routine of doing that. Mm-hmm. But what about mastering the mundane routine of maybe reading 15 minutes a day? That's what I was going to ask. What What would you say if you had to maybe distill those things down into maybe five items? What, what are some of those things that um, that you found yield a huge, um, I guess, output or outcome? So I, I like the 15 minutes a day. What else you got? Well, uh, I, you know, I work with and, and coach and train uh, traders and, and, and entrepreneurs mm-hmm. every day. And it's amazing when you do this all the time, you can like see uh, big gaping holes or even small holes and cracks in, in what people are doing. And uh, number one is they're not organized. Mm-hmm. You know, when you start saying, well, you know, like I ask people like, how do you keep track of your appointments? Like say you have, you know, a doctor's appointment, say you have a business appointment. How, and a lot of people say, I, I, I just remembered in my head, or I put it over here, and I'm like, but what tool are you using with all these different apps that are out here? Right, right. So <clears throat> I'm finding that organization, as simple as it may sound, is a big gapping hole in many people's lives. And I'm talking about everything from how they have their house organized, to their car, to their family, to their business, at their mm-hmm. school, at their, their job. So organization is huge. Uh, and are it. are there specific apps or tools that you uh, refer or, or recommend? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know there are thousands out there. I posted There's recently thousands. about how, <laughs> you know, I get to that point in the conversation where it's time to talk project management. And it doesn't matter to me what app somebody says because I probably am already using it, right? right. <laughs> That's probably the most effic- effective or efficient way to do things. But what are some of the ones that, that you found really, really helpful? Well, we may have something in common because what a lot of people don't know is one of my... Uh, favorite things to do is test uh, new apps and to, and to do apps yeah. <laughs> my too uh, <laughs> my uh, too something about being organized that just gives me comfort and peace of mind right yeah. and, and, and at any given time in the palm of my hand I can just look and see where all the pieces are mm-hmm. so uh, a few of my favorite apps uh, some people may have heard of some that may not uh, one of them is called Trello T-R-E-L-L-O I just started using that one in the last two weeks. I really like that one a lot. Incredible. Incredible. Very visual. Yes. um, You know, easy to use. And you can be up and run this thing about 15 minutes. Uh, So Trello's one. Um, Another one is many people have heard of is Evernote. Okay. Evernote. Okay. They they got like 223 million people around the world using Evernote. Oh, jeez. and then a personal favorite of mine is one that's called Tick Tick, T I C K T I C K. I don't know where they got the name from, other than maybe every tick of the clock, you know what, what's going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But these are tremendous organizational tools. You have to have some type of organizational tool Indeed. in 2019. It's a must. Otherwise, I agree wholeheartedly. Everything else is going to fall apart. So let me ask you this then, Jr. on the on the subject of sort of project management and organization. Do you recommend the use of a personal assistant? Oh, like a, a, a 
human being personal assistant like a virtual assistant a personal assistant another human being to assist with admin for entrepreneurs yeah, see, it, all, it all depends on where you are and, and, I, and we'll say in your entrepreneurial journey okay. because one of the things I'm a big advocate of is don't spend any money where you don't have to when you first start off right, you right. want to keep your expenses as low as possible when it comes to things that you can get at, at a low cost now I'm not talking about investing in your education that's something totally different mm. but you can get these apps and the apps are free or cost a little bit a month, a dollar ninety nine a month to get the you know the, the, the advanced app or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I don't recommend that right out the gate. Okay. Um, I say stick with stuff that you can use and is low cost and will keep you organized and efficient. Okay, that's solid. So, so what else you have? Uh, in fact, let me just real quickly, if you've just tuned in, uh, this is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, and I have the pleasure of sitting with Mr. J.R. Fenwick, the founder and CEO of FlipThatStock.com, uh, and also award-winning author of How I Quit My $100,000 a Year Job. Um, and we're having a conversation now, uh, part one of a five-part series where we're focused on the stock market and entrepreneurship, talking today about just getting clarity on what we really want in 2019 um, and going through five five tips, five, uh, five sort of must-dos in terms of uh, getting to this life that we want. So, so far we've talked about 15 minutes a day of reading. We talked about organization. Are there, are there three others you want to give us? Yeah, another one would be uh, develop a, a, a system and a routine. And what I mean is get up and get into a system and a routine. Again, you look at highly successful people, they have routines that they just go through every day. It's not chaos and, 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 and uh, lack of organization over here. So whether mm. it's getting up and, you know, uh, doing your 15 minutes reading right out the gate, uh, meditating right out the gate or whatever, put a routine together and stick with it. You see, that's how you, that compounded effect of organization with a routine, um, it, it just starts adding up over and over and over again. So that's another yeah. thing. Systems and routines. I like that one. What else you got? Another one is, I don't care how much money you got, if you don't have your health, it's not going to work. Mm. It just ain't going to work. Health as well. So you've got to have, yeah, <laughs> health is your ultimate wealth. Um, I heard about a gentleman the other day and speaking with a colleague who was telling me about a gentleman who's very, very successful, makes millions of dollars a year, but weighs about 500 pounds. Mm. How's that going to work? I mean, that, that just that doesn't work. That's not so sustainable. part of your routine should be something that you're doing actively to keep um, your, your health together, your physical health together. I don't care if it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or five minutes. You got to do it. You got to get into something that keeps you going. So uh, uh, that's another one. Yeah. And then the last one, and, and, and uh, this is a big one, is um, meditating and getting into uh, meditation. Hmm. Even if it's just a few minutes a day, just taking time to sit in a quiet place and just think. I like that one. So I got, I got to ask from the vantage point of mm-hmm. entrepreneurship, what is the benefit of meditation? Let me tell you, when you go on this entrepreneur journey, and, and I'll be talking about this in my in my new upcoming book, um, but there's going to be so many things coming at you at, at all times, and it kind of knocks you off your center, off your balance. And if you can't just get in a corner or somewhere quiet and just decompress and then just think, one of the great things about uh, entrepreneurship that leads to uh, when you do get freedom, financial freedom, is that you have the time to just sit and think. Most people don't have that. They're always in a rush, on mm-hmm. the beltway, at the job, picking the kids up, you know, in the grocery store. But yeah. when you get to a certain point, and if you start now, you don't have to wait till you're financially free. You don't have to wait till you have this big, successful company. You develop this habit now so that when you do, all this stuff does grow. You can stay calm and centered as all this chaos and stuff around you happens. Because trust me, it will. It definitely will. Makes sense. So, how, so the practice um, of developing that calm so that you're prepared for the inevitable 
storm that sort of <laughs> is entrepreneurship, right? Okay. Absolutely. I love it. I, I'll even give you guys a, a, a bonus one. <laughs> this is a bonus. Okay. I we went through, I'm uh, taking notes. Go ahead. Story. Okay. Everybody says, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be my own boss. I want to go, you know, I want to do this. I want to do that. All right. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you 1 million percent they're going to be challenges that smack you in the face along your journey. Mm -hmm. If you understand these other concepts, organizations, routine systems, meditation, and uh, the other things that we talked about. And number six is stay calm. We have uh, some obstacle obstacle in your way and physically take out a piece of paper and write out all your options I don't mm. care what situation you are facing there are always options available always for you. and you're always I agree and to you're that you're not the only person going through that you're not the only person who's going through it that's so, good because we get in that space and it feels like oh my goodness uh, this has never happened on the planet before <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 just, it's just me well, it is about, what, 7.7 .7 billion people on the planet? It, yeah, it's happened to some other people. And it's happening now so, to some folks, too. So we've got absolutely. two minutes, JR, and I know that you might like to speak a bit about how the stock market can help us to get what we want in 2019. I want to make sure we get that in as we're wrapping up here. Yeah. So what I looked at, and, and I recently did a survey as to what is the number one thing people said they want in 2019, and probably not to too many surprises, people surprised they said they wanted more money, mm -hmm. right? But when I questioned them more, it wasn't that they really wanted more money, mm -hmm. it was that they wanted more of what money would offer them, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. options and freedom. Mm -hmm. But we took it a step further because... You know, you can get two or three extra jobs, make more money, you still don't have freedom. Exactly. So what they really wanted was freedom money. Mm. And one of the things that, you know, enticed me to get into the stock market is it offers freedom money or passive uh, income. Meaning, you know, when I purchase a stock, I don't have to sit there and really do anything. If it goes up, you know, uh, it does what I want it to do, I make money. And so this is one of the things that is a perfect compliment. The stock market is a perfect compliment to whatever you're doing. If you're a student, if you own a business, if you work a job, mm. there's, and we'll get into this in the, in, in, in the next segment, it's easy to add it into what you're doing and help you get freedom money. Not a guarantee that you'll make money, but an opportunity. And you have to be in something that offers that if you really want to get to what most people want, which is freedom to do what they want with their family, their friends, travel, you know, and, and, and pursue their passions. So we're going to get into that, uh, uh, you know, in, in the next episodes of how to really use the stock market to help you get what you want. I love it, JR. This has been great. It has been a blast. I look forward to it. Y'all not ready for the next four episodes we got coming. <laughs> And this is yeah this is gonna so this is gonna build I, I definitely want to encourage you if you're listening today tune in every Wednesday this month um, this is going to build um, so by the end of the month what would you say we'd be prepared to do so at the end of the month you've got to make a decision right and you've got to say okay I want to take action on something some of these principles and topics that we're talking about you should be ready to pull the trigger and actually take action even as we're going not yeah. just at the end of the month but okay. as we're going okay right? so all right look i gotta cut you off my producer's like you know it's, it's time to wrap up <laughs> <laughs> but we will talk to you soon this segment was brought to you by flip the leading education technology company that specializes in teaching beginners how to trade in the stock market our next guests have a focus on power couples, uh, building a legacy of wealth together. Uh, we are very excited to welcome Mr. and Mrs. Greg and Stephanie Bailey to the show. They created Vision in May of 2010. Greg Bailey is an ex-military with 10 years experience. He has a bachelor's degree in organizational development and an MBA in international business and marketing. Uh, the purpose of their business is to provide business development services. They are a one-stop shop for anyone that's starting a new business. Uh, some of the services that they provide include marketing, search engine optimization, photography, social media support, live streaming, uh, websites and videography, 
They also have an online internet radio station, a very successful radio station, Vision Radio. And they have an app that they created about eight years ago. Uh, Stephanie manages Hometown Sheds in Lincolnton, North Carolina. They work 100% as a team um, and their relationship is all about obviously both marriage and business. We're excited to welcome you. Are you there? Yes, I am. How are you doing? I am doing wonderfully well, Greg. Thanks so much for joining us today. Well, um, I I do have to say uh, part of being a power couple is that we got a lot of power business and my wife. Uh, right before the interview, she had three clients that came in. She cannot uh. get away. But, <laughs> but, but, we like you said, we're married and we are one. Yes, so, so you make it work. I will be able to answer all questions uh, that, that that you got. So, Ooh, fantastic, that and we're going to make this a great interview. Okay, I'm excited. So, Greg, I, I, I'm really excited because this is sort of, this is being painted as the ideal scenario right now. I mean, there are so many successful power couples that I think a lot of us emulate. You know, we really believe that um, that this is sort of the American, or this is becoming the American dream, this sort of um, embracing entrepreneurship uh, from the vantage point of, a marriage. I know that was one of the things that my husband and I spoke a lot about as we were dating. You know, we wanted to um, we wanted to develop a legacy together. And so I just want to commend you and your wife. I know that it is not easy. I know from experience <laughs> it is challenging. Yeah. Right. And so I just want to commend you for putting in the work um, to to build out your dream, first of all. Thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations to you and your husband, too. Thank you. So, so tell us your story. How did, how did vision come about? Well, what happened was, um, uh, so I, I worked a lot in corporate and, uh, you know, I was a fast tracker. Um, and what, it, um, what happened is I hit the glass ceiling as being African American, mm-hmm. uh, African American male. So, you know, everybody always talks about the glass ceiling happens with women. They get to a certain point and they get going anywhere. But a lot of people don't understand that happens with African-American men first. Yeah. It is very hard because we got to hit the stereotypes. You know, here it is. I got a B.A., but I'm still not there with the guys that got the B.A. So then, you know what? Mm. You know, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm going to go out and get an M.B.A. Mm-hmm. I get an M.B.A., then it's an excuse that I'm too overqualified. So yeah. I'm okay. being ex-military. I've, I've always learned in the military <clears throat> that you, you adapt and overcome. And so one day I'm sitting down and talking to my wife and I'm going through my frustrations and stuff like that. And um, I just happened to show her my business plan from uh, grad school. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she looked at it and she said, baby, this is brilliant. And wow. she said, why don't you do it? And I was like, serious? And... What I did was when she told me to do it, I jumped out on faith and not by sight. I quit my job. I had basically a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. I put in, you know, because I already know how to build websites and stuff like that because I did it for corporate America. Gotcha. So when I thought about it, I said instead of me doing it for corporate America, I said I'm going to build a business to where I can outsource my my services to them and also to be able to offer my knowledge and experience corporate level to small businesses to help them be able to start from bottom up all the way through. And so that's what I did. And I started from there and uh, we we, uh, built our online radio station. Uh, We do everything from videography to photography. And um, so it's just basically anything that a company needs I don't care, the, care whether you're um, you're selling socks or widgets or whether you're a model. Everything right. is, we treat it as if the building blocks of business and also marketing one-on-one. And we help them be able to establish exactly the right direction that they need to go. And that's what we created. 
Greg, I love it. And just, you know, for the benefit of those that may have just tuned in, uh, this is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, uh, having a conversation now with Greg Bailey of Greg and Stephanie Bailey (laughs) and Vision Business Development, uh, Vision Radio, about how it is that they've built this this legacy of wealth together. Um, And just, just a quick recap, it sounds like you got a story that a lot of us share, right? We, we get to a point in our jobs where there's nowhere else that we can go. We try to go back to school and now all of a sudden, you know, we're, oh, we went from underqualified to overqualified. And you kind of reached into your, um, your tool belt there and discover, wait a minute, I've got, I've got some stuff here that I can work with. Um, with the blessing of your wife, you jumped out there and, um, and created this business. Is that, is that where we oh, are? Yeah, absolutely. You know, in, in, the, in the, the, the critical part about, you know, the success of my, and I, and I do want to go back and tell everybody what vision stands for. Uh, vision is spelled, it's unique. It's spelled D-Y-Z-I-O-N. Mm. And um, that's what it is. I prayed on the name. I said, you know, God, show me the name that I should have. And he, was, he showed me in a vision, B-Y-Z-I-O-N. You take the B-Y off of it, it's Zion. Mm-hmm. This is not my vision, this is God's vision. Mm. And that's how we take it. And the good thing about my relationship with my wife is, is what makes it good for us is, it's our communication. Mm. It's all about communication. And uh, we built a, a, with our, even with our personal, it carries over into our business. It's all about communication. And uh, I don't care whether you're in com- corporate America, you're in the military, or whether you run in a husband-wife relationship, it has to be about communication. And believe it or not, with our having a business together, because I was kind of scared at first. I'm like, oh, no. I don't know about running this business with my wife. You know, I don't know about this. But once I did it, it actually made our relationship better. Wow. And, uh, you know, so it's like eight years into it, our business relationship has made our personal relationship even stronger you know because there's really we know each other so well to it's pathetic i mean it's it's kind of scary you know is how you know i know my wife so well you know and it's kind of rare with men because you know men you know we kind of hard-headed and don't listen to women Mm -hmm. but i know her so well on everything so it's you know it's, it's, it's 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 great so I'm I'm very fortunate and and uh and and I love it you know like uh, I think the uh, lady that set this interview up mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of uh, ironic that I, I had actually given a couple classes um a while back to the college that she was going to uh, it wasn't A and T it wasn't Shaw University I forgot the one it was in North Carolina uh, but I. I had actually give, give a couple classes. She remembered me from the classes that I had given and uh, about talking these same type subject was about eight years ago. Got and uh, so, yeah, and you know, it kind of made me feel kind of good when she told me you guys are calling me. So I'm, I'm blessed. And I, and I thank you for this interview. Oh, no, it's, it's absolutely my pleasure. So, so what's, the, what's the vision for Vision? Where are you going with this concept. I mean, I, I, I see on social media, you got, you know, 100,000 followers and all of this traction. Um, where, where, what's the vision? What's the big picture? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit different than uh, most business people. Uh, like I said, uh, not, uh, I've been blessed, you know, I'm in military. I've been in 21 countries uh, around the world. And, um, what, what I had to learn that it, uh, with business, that it's, an, it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about others. Right. And uh, what may, makes my business so successful is that I put the people first. I put my clients first. You know, um, I, I've, I've learned to listen to the clients. I want, yeah. I want to know what they want first before I even talk about what I can do for them. I want to know what, what do you need? And um, so part of it right now, if you really want to look at it, where I'm 48 years old and what what it's about me and where I want to build a legacy. It's not about me trying to be a billionaire, but I want to build a legacy where people can look back at me and my wife and say they were good people. They helped a lot of people. 
the yeah. financial returns, that's going to come. That's going to come. I'm not even, I've never even been worried about that. My job is to go out there, do people right, help people. And then from that standpoint, you reap the rewards of everything else. And well, that's, that's really what it's all about with me. Yeah, that's good. Let's let's get into it a little bit. I know you work with a lot of new business owners. I mean, it's 2019 and, you know, people are starting businesses left and right. You know, folks have figured out entrepreneurship is the way to go. Give us some solid advice for folks that are turning that corner into entrepreneurship for the very first time. What are some things that, you know, based on your experience, um, with kind of jumping on so feet first, what, what would you say to a brand new business owner here on January the, 2nd, the, 2019? The first thing they have to do, they have to get over the fear of they can't. They mm -hmm. have to get into the, 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 really the mindset that is that failure is not an option. They, and they, they, and also critical, they cannot be afraid of failure. Yeah. That's the critical part. Yeah. Don't be afraid of failure. Fra failure to me, a lot of times, is that is your that is how you learn. Right. And I like I uh, I, I put a, I put a message on my Facebook page before. A mistake is not a mistake unless you continue to make it. So don't be That's afraid good. to make a mistake. You take that and the way I look at it right now, when you make a mistake, you look at it from a continuous improvement, mm -hmm. continuous improvement, and mm -hmm. don't be afraid to take criticism. Mm -hmm. if, a, if somebody comes back over and says, hey, uh, we think you should do this. You should think, well, you know what? Those are your clients. you got to listen to them. Absolutely. So what I do is if somebody gives me uh, some criticism, you know, it might be kind of harsh. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back in it. I'm going to reassess it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to fix it. I would encourage everybody to get familiar who's starting out with a thing called a couple things. It's called a SWOT. It's called a SWOT analysis. What you want to do, you want to look at your strengths, weaknesses, observations, and threats. That's sure. critical when you're starting out with your business. Number two, when you're doing out, is, you know, I'm getting a little bit deeper. You're going to look at this Japanese word called MUDA. MUDA is the elimination of waste. What you want to do is you want to write down everything that you want to do. And whatever you can't do, mark it off your list. Hmm. Don't even think about doing it. You know, if it doesn't add value to your business, and to add value is not you, if it doesn't add value to the client, do not do it. Don't do it. It has to add value to the client. And pe a lot of times what people get caught up into, they're all about the bling bling. Quit the bling bling. Stop thinking bling bling. What they got to do is get their foundation. What you don't, a lot of people try to put the, uh, it's like a Christmas tree. They want to put the ornaments on before they, put, they build a Christmas tree. You got to build that foundation first. So don't think bling bling. And um, those, those are the steps that I tell people you got to be successful. You have to have, and it is critical to build an online presence. you got to have a website. A lot of people go in and they want to build up social media first before they build a website. As a business, people want to Google you. They want to see a website. Got they want to see a good functional website. Greg, let me cut you because there just for a quick second. Uh, just an update here for folks that may have just joined us. Uh, Blair Durham here with Black Wall Street today. Uh, having a conversation with Greg Bailey of Vision Business Development uh, and Vision Radio about what it looks like. How? What, what are some nuggets there for new business owners? Um, I want to thank you for, for, for these nuggets. They're great. <laughs> I often say that failure is the first sign of success, right? So I just you know if you don't if you're not failing then you probably aren't attempting anything new so so I love that I, obviously the piece about the SWOT analysis is great uh, Muda hadn't heard of that piece uh, but I love it I, I agree we've got to it's actually it's Muda Muda is actually Six Sigma a lot of people need to look that up it's okay it's, it's okay Six Sigma word and, and then Six Sigma and Muda actually came from, uh, it can, actually came from, it's, it's Japanese. Mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the Japanese actually took the military concepts. 
Got how it. we do things in the military. Sure. And what they did was Japanese took the military concept and what they did, they perfected it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And But at the same time, you know how it is, you know, people just got to understand words and break it down to where they can understand it. And basically what it is, it's just getting rid of waste. Get rid of things in your life that are causing you. If you listen, if you can't control it, get rid of it. Don't worry about it. Move, keep it moving. We've got about two and a half minutes left. You talked about building an online presence. Um, I I like what you said. Focus first on getting the website done before you seek to build out the social media platforms. I think that that's 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 probably valid. I know a lot of people have done that the other way around and. Uh, you know, maybe there was a, a cost factor. You know, you look at building a website. Not everybody can do that on their own, you know, uh, whereas they can kind of put that time in with social media. But I think I agree with you that, that building out the website is important. Well, uh, the, the what else, thing, what else uh, do you have? Know, We've got another two they, minutes. I, one I'm minute. I'm sorry. Right now. One, one minute. Invest in yourself. Okay. So don't go out there and shortchange it. If you got to put in $500 to start your business, Mm -hmm. don't be cheap. Do it. Hmm. Because your first impression is your last impression. And don't go out expecting for people to do things for you for free. They're not. Mm. That's a good one. Critical. Don't look for that that handout. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so so let me ask you this. Greg, folks are going to want to get in contact with you. Um, aside from the visionradio.com, how can you be reached? Well, the, the website that they can reach me uh, at is uh, Vision Photo, D Y Z I O N Photo.com. Okay. So uh, that's what we're doing because I'm integrating all my businesses under Vision Photo for right now, the web ser- services and all that stuff right there. Okay. So www. D Y Z I O N photo dot com. And of course, you got the radio station. They're all kind of like interchanged and locked together. Okay. 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 All right. Cool. Did you want to provide a phone number or anything like that? I got visionphoto.com, uh, visionradio.com. How else can you be reached? And our, our phone number is 704 704 240 8939. And, um, if you just type in Vision, B-Y-Z-I-O-N, on the internet, on Google, we're everywhere. That's all you. Yeah. All over Google. I got you. Easy. Okay. And you're providing these services to people all over the country. Is that right? Absolutely. I, uh, I've had clients all the way from Africa to Canada that we, uh, we've actually provided services for. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, Greg, again, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. I certainly look forward to having you back on the show. I want to thank you for those nuggets. I took notes. This has been a fascinating show. I want to leave you with just a few uh, announcements. Hashtag Black Excellence. Three African-American students selected as 2019 Rhodes Scholars. Black students across the country are continuing to display excellence in the realm of academia. According to the Journal of Blacks in Higher Education, three African-American students were selected as 2019 Rhodes Scholars. The students are three of 32 chosen by the Rhodes Trust to be granted graduate scholarships to further their education at the England-based Oxford University, the news outlet writes. They were picked from a poll of nearly 3,000 applicants. Among the black students who received the honor are Leah Petros, a University of Pittsburgh alumna who studied economics and neuroscience and minored in chemistry. University of Pennsylvania senior Ania Moore, who's studying law and Africana studies, and Austin T. Hughes from the University of Iowa, who's currently majoring in theater arts, creative writing, and literature, along with Japanese linguistics. All three students have used their knowledge to make an impact in their local communities and beyond. Petros led a research project in Malawi surrounding the economics of health information systems. Moore has explored how race, class, and gentrification are intertwined through her research, and Hughes has received several awards for his creative writing. A black entrepreneur from Alabama launches telecom company already valued at $5.9 million. Tessix Wireless, a telecommunications company, announced this launching in the summer of 2018. It has since gathered the attention of interested customers and private investors with interest in the startup. With their interest, Tessix Wireless received investing and acquisition offers from investors taking the company to 
$5.9 million in value. Although Testix Wireless launch is set for a January 2019 launch, the company has managed to generate 3,000 plus early waitlist subscribers in under a three week time frame. They further generated numerous pre sales for their network's SIM kits from enthusiastic customers looking to switch. Testix Wireless was founded by 24 year old Alabamian entrepreneur. Chameria Moncrief under her parent company, Chameria Brands and Company. She started the telecom company because of her own bad experience with large carriers. To learn more about Tessix Wireless, visit the network's website at www.tessixwireless.com. Leaders from Tennessee State University, uh, the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and Regions Bank have announced the launch of a new collaboration designed to empower people with essential financial and credit management skills. The Financial Education and Empowerment Initiative, organized by AKA and supported by Regions Bank, combines the community reach of AKA's local chapters with the financial expertise of Regions personnel. As part of the program, the AKA chapter at Tennessee State will organize community-based interactive financial education workshops, reaching people representing diverse ages, incomes, and backgrounds. Workshops will not be limited to campus. They will also be held in neighborhoods across Nashville. Regions Associates will deliver financial advice, guidance, and education based on their experience helping people identify and reach financial goals. Stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram. And then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today. We look forward to talking again next week. Have a wonderful week. I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community, not a particular political party.